Welcome to Excel in Finance video number 18. Hey, if you want to download this workbook or the PDF file, just click on the link below the video and you can download ch the files for chapter 3. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about, I have to go back over here, we're going to talk about uh, asset utilization ratios. How effect efficiently are we using assets? Now, we're going to look at uh, total asset turnover, capital intensity, which are kind of related. And then we're going to look at uh, asset utilization ratios that will give us the number of days in the cash cycle. All right, let's start with um, asset turnover. Now, this is just a fancy name. As we've talked about a lot in this video, if you know what's in the numerator and the denominator, the amounts and the units, then it's easy to figure out what it means. And this one is sales divided by total assets. So S divided by A, sales divided by assets. Well, think about this. If you, uh, we always keep the one in the denominator, right? But if you, one year, are generating $3 of sales for every $1 you bought in assets for your business, and the year before you were generating $2 for every $1 of asset, which is better? Pretty much, without exception, the higher the better. It means you're using your assets efficiently. If you go from 2 to $3, it's the same $1 of asset is now generating three dollars so that is better <clears throat> two things uh, to, to keep in mind when we look at this ratio here if a corporation has newer assets that have not been depreciated then there's no there's not much depreciation in this asset if you have uh, an older company with, or a company with lots of older assets that have been fully depreciated, remember depreciated means the book value goes down. There's lots of depreciation. So a new company, just imagine we had uh, $10 of sales for uh, $5 of assets. 10 divided by 5 is 2. But what if these were all brand new assets, right? And you look at the same, co a, a different company, but has similar assets, but they're all old. They've all been depreciated. So instead of the new company, 10 divided by 5 asset, it could be 10 divided by 2 asset. And that would give us a much bigger number. That would give us 5. So uh, you got to also look at what sort of assets, how old they are, how much depreciation. But in general, you, can, you get the idea. A company that has a higher sales to assets or asset turnover ratio is going to be better. Now, if we turn this upside down, take the reciprocal of it and divide assets by sales. Oh, assets divided by sales. That's called ca capital intensity ratio. And now the the one is in the numerator. So for for every one dollars of sa sales, how many assets did we need? Right. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and go calculate uh, this one right here for our Whole Foods example, and then we'll move on to the next uh, asset utilization ratios. I'm going to go over to Excel. All right, now in our last couple of videos, we had our financial statements um, over here for Whole Foods. We had balance sheet and income statement. I've already uh, taken the numbers from them and put them here. So we have our sales, total assets, cost of goods sold, and a few other numbers. So let's just look at our asset turnover. For 2006, we said all of the sales divided by all of the assets. So there we go, $2.74 sales for every $1 of asset. Let's go ahead. Actually, we can just copy this over. All right, so it went up. $2 uh, the year before for every $1 of asset. Remember, Whole Foods, you have um, some buildings, some equipment inside of the store, some cash registers, some leases probably that are capitalized and recorded assets. But there it is, $2.49. If you go up and you're generating more dollars of sales from the, the same $1 of asset, uh, it tends to be much better. Also, this is a great number you can use to compare uh, they, you could go compare to other um, 
food sellers, right? And even somebody closer, you know, we looked at Safeway before, but they sell lots of other things besides organic food. They're not a direct competitor. In the Seattle area, you know, Whole Foods is here, but there's another local called uh, cooperative called PCC, right? And they're a little teeny small company. Ah, but when you do the ratio, you could look at PCC and Whole Foods and see which one is generating more sales per asset per asset, one dollar of asset. All right, let's go back over to our PDFs. Let's look at this because uh, we're going to do something clever with our next ratios. And I drew a little picture here. This is actually from our uh, textbook. Let's just think, um, we want to be able to look at the financial statements. Uh, so these over here. So we have, and my formatting is not working here for some reason. We want to be able to look at the balance sheet and the income statement and figure out how many days it takes them to sell their inventory, how many days it takes them to collect accounts receivable, and how many days it takes them to collect accounts payable. You know, normally you think, well, how are you going to get that information? I don't see any numbers here that show me number of days. Well, um, if we do a little uh, uh, creative ratio um, figuring, we can figure it out. Now, let's just look at the diagram first. <clears throat> oh, we buy some inventory, and not just for Whole Foods, but for any, you know, uh, Target or whoever is buying some inventory. They, um, the inventory period is. If we sold, how long does it take us to sell all of our inventory and then go out and buy a bunch of new inventory? Now, it never really happens exactly like this. You don't sell all your inventory, but we can get an estimate. So we're just going to, for estimate, you'll see that we're going to get 73 days. So we buy a bunch of inventory, sell it down to zero, and then immediately buy a bunch of new inventory. Now, again, that's not the way it really works, but this is an estimate. So 73 days it takes us to sell our, all our inventory. Ah, but then there's an accounts receivable period also. That means it, once we sell to a customer, how long does it take us until we collect? So 36 days. So we get our inventory, and we don't get all the cash till you know 73 plus 36 days. That's called the operating cycle. Now, there's also accounts payable. Accounts payable is when we buy the inventory, we don't immediately give them the cash, right? Maybe to here. So 52 days, let's say, and our calculation, uh, we'll see that it takes 52 days to, to actually pay all of our bills for our inventory we purchased. The difference between here and here is called the cash cycle, right? Here's where our cash went out. Even though we got the inventory here, we cash didn't go out till here. We didn't collect till here. Now, let's look at our example in the PDFs. Here are, let me blow this up a little bit. The first one is called inventory turnover. For each one of the number of days, remember we, we have three separate day periods, the amount of time it takes to sell all our inventory, collect our accounts receivable, and pay for our accounts payable. Uh, so for selling our inventory, we're going to do a calculation called inventory turnover, and then we're going to figure out days, sales, and inventory, which is, just means days to sell inventory. Here's the ratio. Cost of goods sold divided by inventory. Huh? What? Cost of goods sold. What is cost of goods sold? That comes from the income statement. Oh, that's the total cost of all of the inventory we sold for the year divided by the inventory. Now, this is an income statement number. This is a balance sheet number. Now, there's lots of different ways to do ratios, and we, we've uh, mentioned that at the beginning of the, this chapter. In finance, or when you're looking forward, you usually take the ending number from the balance sheet. In accounting, or when you're looking backwards in time, like auditors like to look backwards and see what happened, you usually take n minus begin and um, n plus begin, which means you add end and begin and divide by 2 to get a, an, an average. In this class, we're not going to do that. We're just going to take the end. I think on this next sheet here, I have a little note here about that. End, and then here's how you would do an average, which in uh, accounting, oftentimes, you'd uh, see this. But the point is, if you're looking into the future, which finance people are, you take the end number. If you're looking backwards into the past, you take n plus begin divided by 2.
Okay, so cost of goods sold, and then we inventory. So now what does this mean? This is everything we sold. See, I even put a note here. This is all the inventory we sold during the year. Here's the inventory on the shelves at the last day. Now, this fluctuates a lot, right? So um, again, this is just an, a way to estimate. But when we do this division, it's going to give us a number. Let's just see. We take 5,000 cost of goods sold. Um, divided by $1,000 of inventory left. When we do this division, that means $5 of cost of goods sold for every $1 of inventory. It means this took it took us five times uh, that we had to have inventory. Here's a better picture. It means that we, we had all our inventory and we sold it down to zero and then we immediately restocked. And then we came down to zero and we immediately restocked. Again, this is not the way it really works the way it's not the way inventory flows but this is a great measure to get an estimate of uh, how many times you go through your inventory all right so five times it means if we sold uh, all of our inventory down to zero we do it five times in one year well think about that what does that mean now if we want the days to sell inventory we just take 365 divided by five and we get 73 days so that's the first calculation. That's how long it takes us to sell all of our inventory. Now, the, this is called receivables turnover. And it's going to tell us how long it takes to uh, collect accounts receivable. Net sales divided by accounts receivable. Now, again, this is an uh, income statement number. And this is the end balance sheet number. So sales divided by AR. Same kind of idea. It's as if we took just the ending accounts receivable um, did this division and it tells us that 10 times during the year we filled up our AR and then collected it filled it up collected it filled it up collected it so um, in essence we kind of went through the AR 10 times during the year well if it's 10 times during the year to figure out days we take 365 divided by 10 so on average it took us 36.5 days to collect all of our accounts receivables. Using that same logic, we can do payable turnover. Remember, this is when we buy the inventory. We don't pay it for a number of days. So we take cost of goods sold, just like we did with inventory. But now the denominator is accounts payable. Cost of goods sold divided by uh, accounts payable. We'll say it's 5,600 divided by 800. So we get seven times during the year we have a, you know, filled up accounts payable, we pay it off. We fill it up again, pay it off. Fill it up, pay it, pay it off. Again, we take 365 divided by 7, it takes 52 days. This is just a way for people outside the firm to, to look at financial statements and estimate. Inside the firm, you have you perhaps have much better data to calculate um, uh, numbers. But again, looking at financial statements, uh, which is oftentimes the best information we have, we can make these estimates. So here's the deal. The operating cycle is going to be days to sell inventory plus days to collect AR. 73 plus 36.5, that's 109 uh, and a half days. But we have to, from the operating cycle, right here, to calculate cash cycle, we then subtract because we avoided. We didn't have to pay cash out right at the beginning when we got our um, a, our new inventory on the book. So we subtract our 52 and we get 57.5. So about 57 or 58 days is our cash cycle. Now if we go back to this drawing, there it is, the full operating period from when we get our inventory to when we finally collect from the customers. And then we subtract this little bit because we didn't have the cash coming right out right when we got the inventory. Cash out, finally cash in. All right, let's go see if we can calculate this over in Excel. OK, so our inventory turnover, cost of goods sold, divided by our inventory. 17, so virtually identical for uh, each year. All right, to get this today's, we simply say equals 365 divided by the number of times. That 17 means the number of times we sold our inventory and restocked it. And for a uh, 
a store selling uh, food, it better be pretty high, right? It's not like a jeweler whose inventory turnover is probably really slow. Okay, so these numbers are going to be exactly the same too. Uh, not much change. Now, let's do, again, how many days it takes us to sell all of our inventory. Now, AR, how long does it take us to, to collect? Now, first we got to do the number of times we actually collect uh, all of our AR during a single year. We're going to take sales divided by accounts receivable. So 68 times, 70 times. Uh, probably extremely high. Um, you know, most of the customers coming in here are not using any kind of AR. They're paying cash or credit cards or whatever. Days equals 365 divided by this. Right? So what few customers they uh, have doing any kind of AR, and probably this number is, is just not very important for a, uh, an entity like Whole Foods or Safeway, whereas uh, for Home Depot, it's probably really significant because Home Depot sells a lot of things on account, especially to contractors. Now, AP, accounts payable, turnover. How many times we pay off our bills completely in a year equals our cost of goods sold divided by our AP, accounts payable. Ah, so we pay off our bills pretty quickly too. Again, look at that. These are all pretty identical numbers. None of these are are changing much from year to year. Equals 365 divided by this will tell us 365 equals 365 divided by this and this will tell us how many days. So pay off bills quite quickly, right? Within 12 days on average. All right again, these are all estimates, but now we get to figure out operating day operating cycle in days. This is days holding inventory plus days until collect AR. This is just like we saw in that drawing. So I'm going to say equals whoop, plus that one there. Wow. Well, I mean, in a Whole Foods, selling food is much different than Boeing. The operating cycle that's uh, at a store where it sells food, much shorter than operating cycle for a manufacturer that builds airplanes. All right. Um, now let's do the uh, take this and we will subtract the number of days it takes us to pay our bills on average and we get our cash cycle in days 13 not very much fully expected in uh, an industry like Whole Foods or Safeway alright uh, that's a little bit about um, asset utilization we'll see you next video